a qubit actually doesn't need to have a physical form. Mm. It's a piece of information. Let me make a, an analogy to regular bits. Bits are just pieces of information. Right. So, for example, if you've got a, a 64-bit chip in your computer, all right, all that is is that it can carry or hold 64 pieces of information that are either zero or one. If you have a bit, it's just a piece of information, and you can store it either electronically in a chip with a uh, plus five volts or minus five volts or something like that. Or you could say store a bit of information in a QR code, which is just a square that's white or a square that's black. Or you can do a coin flip, whether it's heads or it's tails. So George, your question, what is a qubit really? It's a quantum bit, but it's a piece of information and you can store it in any kind of container that quantum systems can hold this information. It's the very beginnings of using quantum computing in regular computing that but we're used that, but to, but they are far, far away from a true quantum computer. Okay, you just okay. said that it's not a thing, it's, a, it's information, but That's right. now tell us the difference between a traditional bit, which is a zero or one, or yes. a black or white, and a qubit, which is a statistical mm -hmm. occupation. So, right. so just go there. Okay, well, a bit, is either a zero or a one. Or, or black you know, and a white. Black yeah. and a white, yeah. you know, just a piece of information that is or is not. So it's right? binary. And so it's a binary, binary piece of information. Thank you. Right. The qubit is binary when you read it. Uh -huh. But before it becomes read, it, can, it is not yet settled. So it can be somewhere between zero and one, and the complexity of the amount of zeroness or oneness a qubit has fluctuates and varies until such time as, as you, you read, read it. it. Right, so if you have a computer uh, nowadays, we want to make a bit switch as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. All right, so we want our computers to switch from zero to one or one to the zero speed of the computer as fast is, yeah, as you can, that. Yeah. right. With a qubit, you might want to slow it down a little tiny bit. And while that stuff inside the qubit is settling out, it may actually be able to make calculations. You can actually ask the qubit using various electronic inputs to give you a number doing some sort of a calculation or some sort of a figuring that you could not do in real time at high speed. And because the quantum time frame is so fast, even if we slow it down, mm -hmm. you still wind up being able to do certain calculations way faster than any classical. So, 